Okay, so we're in class chondrichthys. Um, chondra means cartilage, ichthys is fish, so these are the cartilage fish. Um, these types of fish have a cartilage skeleton, which is how they get put into this class, one of the main things that puts them into this class. So they do have a cartilage skeleton. They actually do not have a bone in their body. Okay? Their skeleton is made completely out of cartilage. The characteristic that you have to have in order to be placed into this class, number one, you do have to have a cartilage skeleton, because that's like the main thing. Um, but you also have a bunch of other things that you need to have. So um, they have to have biting jaws. Okay, so jaw, like movable jaws. Remember lampreys and hagfish, they just have like the oral discs. They don't have like biting jaws. These guys do have jaws, okay? Um, in fact, there's an entire movie named after their jaws called Jaws, okay? So um, they do have jaws that they can use to bite, okay? Um, they also have fleshy paired fins. What does that mean? Well, think of like, think of Dory, right? And think of like her little yellow pectoral fins that are up at the front, yeah? Um, those are very delicate, right? She kind of like moves them and like if you look at them, they've got like bones and then there's like little membranes in between the bones, right? They're very delicate and, and like wavy, yes? Um, and a shark, okay, their pectoral fins are much more like substantial, okay? They've, they've got a lot more flesh there than in like Dory's little fins, okay? So they, we, we say they're fleshy paired fins they've got a lot more sub, uh, substance to them than a bony fish would, okay? <laughs> so Dory would be an osteichthys, which is a bony fish, and in chondrichthys, they, they have these fleshy paired fins, okay? Um, they also have five to seven gill slits, typically. Um, so on the outside of their body, their body, you'd see the five to seven gill slits. Uh, <coughs> do you remember when we talked about gills, how many, like, gill arches do bony fish have? four on each side, right? So they'll have four gill arches on each side. A uh, cartilaginous fish will have five to seven, okay, gill arches on each side. Um, so they have more. Um, they're, the way that their gills are structured are also different. So the gill arches are actually gonna be kind of like an individual kind of like cells or like uh, pouches, okay? So each gill arch is gonna be separated from another gill arch by like a flap of skin, okay? so. Um, they'll each be in their own little like home. Whereas like in bony fish, those four gill arches are all kind of in the same space and then they've got a bony protective covering over those gills called an operculum. Um, and that covers their gills and helps to protect their gills, okay? Whereas sharks and rays and stuff don't have that. So they have five to seven gill slits on either side. Um, they're in separate little pouches and there's no like bony protective covering over those gills. That's one of the reasons why like if you, they say if you're getting attacked by a shark to like punch it in the gills because there's no protection there for them. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, you can also punch it in the nose, but um, you can also punch it in the gills. So let me sh just pop this picture up here so you can see it. So you can see the gill slits here on the side, right? Yeah. We'll talk about why it's all scarred in just a sec. Um, so see the, the slits? So in a, in a bony fish, like a goldfish, right, they just, they actually have like this bony plate that covers those gills, okay? So those are the five to seven um, gill slits on each side. Depending on the species of sharks, they'll have five or six or seven. They also have scales. So remember our third part to our definition of fish, aquatic vertebrates that are characterized by paired fin scales and gills, okay? We've already talked about the paired fins and the gills. Here's their scales. Um, they have what are called placoid scales, and those scales are actually tiny teeth in their skin. Okay, you can also call them dermal denticles. Okay, so they are teeth in their skin. And you can see this picture right here on the upper right. Those are a microscopic view of a shark scale, the white shark scale. Um, and you can see they kind of look like teeth, right? They're sharp and they're pointy. And um, you can also see from that picture that if you pass your hand, like, rub the shark from this direction, so I, like from the top to the bottom. Um, would it feel very rough? No, not really. Maybe a little bit, so it's kind of bumpy, right? But if you rub your hand from the bottom of the picture up, would it feel kind of rough? Yes, because it's got a lot of the like points, right? The pointy parts that would you're, you would, could scratch your hand on, okay? So 
dermal denticles, and then they actually take those little dermal denticles and their teeth are modified scales. So they take those little dermal denticles and they make teeth out of them um, in their mouth, of course. Okay, so, and then there's your, there's your rows of teeth and your sharks, okay? Um, they also have an oily liver for buoyancy. We'll talk more about that. Uh, and then they also do internal fertilization. So they mate and the egg gets fertilized inside of the mother's body. Okay? Does that make sense? So these are the characteristics for this class. All right? So we're going to take this internal fertilization and we're going to talk about how they actually reproduce. Okay? Because it's kind of interesting. Um, here, this picture just shows you the scales okay, of the sharks. You can see like the skin. This is a super microscopic view. And then you can see the, the dermal denticle. Okay? All right. So shark reproduction and, well, chondrichthys reproduction. Um, so they do internal fertilization. Okay? That means that the egg is fertilized inside of the mother's body. So they mate. Okay? Um, and the way that they do that is the male um, has these things called claspers. Okay? And claspers are extensions on the pelvic fin. Okay, and you can actually t tell the sex of a shark just by looking at their pelvic fin. So if they have these claspers on their pelvic fin, then they are a male. If they do not, they are a female. Okay, so tomorrow when you do your dissection, uh, I'm going to ask you, is your shark male or female? And you can tell by looking at the pe pelvic fins. All right, make sense? Okay, so the way that they will mate uh, is the uh, male will actually bite onto the back of the female, so like behind the dorsal fin or like maybe somewhere around the head, and then we'll use the claspers to transfer the sperm to the female. Okay, so he will insert the claspers into the cloaca of the female shark and transfer the sperm. Okay, and the cloaca is in between the female's uh, pelvic fins. Okay, and so he has to bite onto her back in order to hold on and be able to transfer the sperm. So that picture that I showed you, this one, all of those scars, those uh, some of those are probably mating scars, okay, that the female will get when um, you when they mate. So you'll see, you can a lot of times tell a mature, like a sexually mature female shark from a not sexually mature female shark based on whether or not they have mating scars, okay, because they've uh, mated, yeah. Silence. Okay, and you can see there's like scars up here on this one. And like you can see the bite mark actually on this fin there. Okay, so they do get mating scars so, because the males have to bite. All right, so after the egg is fertilized, there are three uh, methods of development that can occur, and they will vary depending on the type of shark or the type of, uh, whether it's a skate or a ray. Okay, so three reproductive strategies or development strategies. The first development strategy is being oviparous. Okay, oviparous uh, simply means laying an egg. Okay, so just like a chicken would lay an egg, um, sharks can lay an egg. Okay, some types of sharks can lay an egg. That the egg is external from the mother's body, so it, you have internal fertilization, and then the female will lay an egg. And the egg is external of the mother's body. Um, and then that egg will have a yolk inside okay, of the egg. Do you know what the yolk is used for in an egg? Food and nutrients, yeah, for the developing baby, right? So that yolk is super concentrated, lots of nutrients and food for the little developing baby. So that yolk will provide the nourishment that that embryo needs to grow up and become a little shark. Yay. Okay. Um, you do have like a hard outer covering on that egg. These are actually skate eggs right here that I have in this bag. Um, I'll pass it around for you to look at. Please be careful because they're like dried and stuff, so they're kind of delicate. Um, but you can look at them. These are the our skate eggs. Also, we saw some at the aquarium, right? They had some of them where they'd taken the front off so you could see the inside of the egg. Yeah. Uh, very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Um, they can't, like, there's a membrane in there that they cannot, like, break, and if they break it, then the egg is, like, popped in the back. So they can, they have a way that they can take that front part off and 
like cover it back up with plastic so that you can see the inside. It's kind of cool. Um, but they lay eggs. You'll see too um, on, on those that are going around, but also in here, can you see kind of like the curly Q things at the top? Okay, those, um, depending on the type of shark or, or um, ray, sorry, skate, they will attach, use those to attach their eggs to like kelp. Okay, so they can attach their eggs to kelp and then that will kind of help this little egg to blend in, right, and not get eaten. Some of them will be like spiral shaped, kind of like a corkscrew shape, and the mom will like lay it into the sand and um, that will be used to anchor it into the sand or like between a rock or something like that. So just depends. Types of sharks that do this, swell sharks, horn sharks, and then obviously like reptiles and stuff like that. All right, and so you can see the little shark hatching and then you can kind of see the little baby shark inside of this picture over here, yeah? Okay, so that's one strategy. Another strategy is called ovoviviparous. Okay, ovoviviparous. Um, in this mating st or reproductive strategy, uh, there's still an egg, okay? So there's still like a yolk, but that egg remains internal inside of the mother's body. So think of it like an egg without a shell, okay? And then that, that little baby and the yolk and everything stays inside of the mother's uterus okay, and develops inside and then is born, all right? So there is an egg, there is a yolk, and they are born. However, the mother does not provide any additional nutrients for the baby other than the yolk. Okay, so it's not like it's not going to be getting any other nutrients from the mom. So if it runs out of nutrients in the yolk, it's not like turning to mom to get food. Okay, um, actually, some sharks. That's kind of weird, but some sharks, uh, the yolk is not enough for the babies to develop completely, to be born. Um, and so the first one to reach a certain point of development, after it reaches that point of development, it actually goes and eats its brothers and sisters inside of the womb. Um, yeah, so if there's like six of them starting out, uh, and the first one that reaches like the first point in development will then go and eat its other brothers and sisters to make itself survive. And then it's born, yeah. Um, and then you can see this picture, okay? So you can see like the yolk, right? And as the baby develops, the yolks get smaller and smaller as the nutrients get used up. It is cute when it's little. Still has sharp teeth though. Um, viviparous is the next reproductive strategy. So in viviparous kind of like reproduction, they, uh, so the baby does get nutrients directly from the mom, okay? So there's no yolk. The mom doesn't produce a yolk, um, and the mom will nourish the baby. Okay, so humans do this. Um, you actually, girls, that when you get pregnant, you actually develop an entirely new organ. It's called the placenta, and that placenta is what feeds the baby. Okay, um, so all of the nutrients that the, that baby needs um, comes through the placenta. All right, and so um, some sharks can do this for do this as well, um, and they will give live birth. Okay, so um, they do give live birth. Uh, these pictures, so this is a, a hammerhead shark that they flipped over, and then they're doing an ultrasound to, like, see the baby inside. That's a little lemon shark being born, and then another little. Hammerhead maybe cool lemon. Hammerheads are cool sharks. Are they hostile? Yes, they can be, yes. Okay. So how do fish stay afloat, cartilaginous fish stay afloat? Because a shark is much more dense than the surrounding water. So if you are more dense than the surrounding water, uh, what is going to happen to you? You're going to sink. Good. Or you're going to drown. Yeah, well, you're going to sink. Um, and so you need to like stay up in the surface waters if that's where all your food is, right? And be able to like hunt for your food. So you need to stay buoyant, right? And there's two things that the cartilaginous fish will use in order to stay buoyant and not sink down to the bottom, and that is their oil-filled liver and then the lift created by their pectoral fins. So their liver is huge. Okay, you'll see this tomorrow in your dissection. They have a three-lobed liver. Okay, it's giant, um, and it is full of oil. It's a special oil called squalene. Okay, um, yeah, it's weird, and 
Is oil more or less dense than water? Less dense, right? It floats on top. So if you have this big organ in your body that's full of oil, is that going to help you stay afloat? Yeah. It's like an internal life preserver, okay? Um, so that helps them to stay buoyant. Then they also have their pectoral fins. Their pectoral fins are shaped like airplane wings. Um, or rather, airplane wings are shaped like shark fins, okay? Um, so they've got this kind of teardrop shape, okay? And that teardrop shape will create lift because as the water goes over these fins, the water that passes underneath uh, can go in a straight line, but the water that passes over has to go in like this longer route, which creates less pressure up here, more pressure down here, and lift gets created, okay? And so sharks, as they're swimming, their little pectoral fins or big pectoral fins are helping to create lift. That also means if they stop swimming, what will happen? They can sink. Yeah. Okay, so that's how they stay afloat. Let's look at the whale shark really fast, and then we need to talk about digestion, digestion so you know what you're looking at tomorrow in your lab. Okay. Um, so whale shark, really cool. It's the biggest fish in the ocean. It can be 40 feet long and 36 tons. So that's huge. Um, but whale shark, you would think, oh, giant shark, it's going to be scary. It's not. They're filter feeders. Okay. They are, um, they do have teeth, but they have 300 teeny, teeny, tiny rows of, like, teeny, teeny, tiny teeth. Um, and their filter feeders are going to eat plankton. You can swim with them. They're not dangerous. Like, people, like, do ecotourism and go, tourism and go swim with the whale sharks. It's pretty cool. Um, so you can go to Cancun and swim with the whale sharks. Okay, so you can see on this slide the range of the whale shark. Okay, so everywhere that's in blue is where you will find them on Earth. Um, and then you can see in the upper right-hand corner, that's the comparison, like size comparison between a whale shark and a school bus. So it's pretty, pretty big. It's so cool. You have to swim with that. It would be pretty cool. Not terrifying. Yeah. All right, digestion and sharks. Um, sharks... Are, are cool. So sharks have biting jaws, okay, that they can use to bite off chunks of flesh, um, depending on the type of shark. However, sharks don't like chew their food. They swallow it whole, okay. So they've got teeth that are really good for tearing off chunks of meat, but then they swallow that whole. They don't sit there and like nom nom nom. Mm, this tastes good, okay. Um, they don't chew their food. Uh, why do you think? A shark would need to just swallow its food whole and not actually sit there and take time to chew their food. So their prey would go away. But what else? They do have a tongue. It's just different, a little bit different from ours. Yeah, it's not as mobile as ours is. Um, they do. What about? So, water that comes into the mouth, where does it go over? The gills. So if, you, if you, like, have to close your mouth and, like, chew your food, what are you missing out on? Oxygen, right? So a shark can't, like, sit there and, like, ooh, enjoy its food, because if it did, it would not be getting oxygen over its gills, water over its gills, okay? So it can breathe. Um, so they have to swallow their food whole. Uh, shark's teeth, you can actually tell a lot about the lifestyle of a shark, so, like, what it eats, based on the shape of its so a shark that just eats like fish is going to have lots of like long, skinny, like spear-like teeth to like grab onto the fish and then swallow the fish whole. A uh, shark that's going to be more of like a predator of bigger types of animals that it'll be tearing chunks out of, it's going to have like kind of more like triangular teeth with like serrations on either side. Okay, like the great white shark has those big like giant um, triangular teeth. And those serrations and stuff on either side, those act like knives, right? So you see when a shark, like, bites down, what does it do? It, like, yeah, thrashes back and forth, okay? And so it's going to use that to, like, tear, use those serrations on their teeth and that movement of their body to tear through the flesh and, like, tear a piece of flesh off, okay? And they'll swallow it. Um, after they swallow it, it goes through the esophagus, into the stomach, gets digested, and then into the intestine. Okay, and in the intestine, that's where nutrients are absorbed, okay? Um, and that's where, like, all the nutrients from your food get absorbed into your body, and your body uses them. Do you have a long or a short intestine? Yeah, long. Very long. Um, 
if you have a long intestine, that's really, really good for being able to absorb lots of nutrients because you are able to have lots of time as the food passes through that intestine to absorb the nutrients. Um, sharks have a very short intestine, okay? Um, so that could be bad, right? Because with a short intestine, not a lot of time to di uh, absorb nutrients and like then bad stuff happens. You don't get food, okay? Um, so they do have a short intestine, but what they have inside is kind of cool. It's called a spiral valve. Um, so it's, it's exactly kind of what it sounds like. It's in a spiral shape. Um, and you'll see it in your dissection tomorrow. You'll cut open the intestine and see the spiral valve. What it does is it allows or prevents the food from just passing like straight through the intestine and out. Um, it makes the food go in the, the spiral motion as it moves through the intestine. Um, so it slows it down okay, to allow for more nutrient absorption. And it helps to um, push the food against or digested food against the walls of the intestine to absorb and also helps to increase surface area. So it's good. Okay, and then any waste products exit any digestive waste products exit out the anus okay the um, anus exits into this opening called the cloaca okay the cloaca is a common opening for any digestive waste also any sort of like um, waste that your kidneys would filter so like pee okay and then it's also reproductive okay so all of those things will exit out through the cloaca okay and then out into the water um, and so you can see right the mouth and the esophagus to the stomach, then your, um, your intestine. It does a little bit. And then it's liver. You can see the big liver. Okay. Um, okay. 